a walk-on tradition that has produced team captains, NFL veterans, and Super Bowl champions. Seeing a head coach through the eyes of the young men in his program. Strength, speed, power. Oh my goodness! A coach helping a team notch the most takeaways in the Big Ten. And and a culture starting to take root in a program and on the field. And Rutgers is on the board. It's all part of the Rutgers football story. It's just such a great story of a team that's come from the ground and built themselves up. Not only in one football game, he's changed the culture for a college, a university, and a state. You can already sense the change in the attitude around the RU football program. Jubilation in Piscataway. He's done it before. He's built his team to believe. You have to respect Jersey. This campus is in a football frenzy. <laughs> and now to come back and be a member of the Big Ten Conference, it's incredible. Well, it's Scarlet Fever here in New Jersey. Racing for the biggest moment ever. An example, if you buy into a team, how much it can benefit you. Go, 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 go. To be the college football team of New Jersey, New York City, and the state of Rutgers, you must not only act the part, you must also look it. New Gear welcomed the team to their locker room in SHI Stadium, and as they suited up for another Big Ten battle, the Scarlet Knights were hoping to have the Nittany Lions seeing red while wearing black. How cool are these black like, uniforms we're about to see? Loving them. Look great, feel good, play good. And Jones is hot, man. They hot. Hot. H O T, hot. Here we go, okay. What's that one with a Nike Lou? Do, do, do. What's that one with a Nike Lou? Do, do, do. Let's get it, let's get it. Let's get it, man. One, two, three. Step on three. One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah. And Rutgers in all black today. Pretty sharp look with the black helmets, with the white block R on the side, and white numbers and lettering as well. Reciano is one of the best coaches out there. I think what he's done with this team is unbelievable. They are a completely different football team. Turner, 5-0 in the backfield. Lee takes the handoff, dropped in the backfield. Inside, nowhere to go. This is well done. Good job of fighting. This is the kind of football you love to play. Christian Izzy brought pressure off the edge, and the ball pops out. It's still three, and Rutgers looking for what could be a huge momentum changing play, and they have it. The ninth bubble recovery for Rutgers this year, which would lead the Big Ten. That draw. Taken down for a sack back at the 12-yard line. That's a big play by Kovertoff right there, and he's been close all day long. And under pressure, and down he goes. Rutgers crunched him on the blitz. Quick throw in, incomplete. Intercepted. And intercepted. He scooped it up off the ground, off the deflection. Christian Isian. A golden opportunity. Second turnover of the day for the Scarlet Knights. This time, Adams gets to the outside. It's going to be first and goal. Rutgers at the 8-yard line. Federal, off balance, turns, throws it back of the end zone. The caught! Oh, no! Oh. Went way up high into the air and pulls it down for the score. Jump ball, it's caught! Boom, Melton! Oh, what a play by Melton to pull it down. And Rutgers is on the board. The Scarlet Knights did find their footing in the second half, keeping Penn State out of the end zone but they were unable to return there themselves. And though the score did not reflect it, the teams on the field and the fans watching at home could see the effort in all three phases and the culture of a program starting to take root. Our guys played hard. It wasn't a, you know, we fought the entire game right to the last snap, but the you know, heart isn't good enough in this league. This is, this is big boy football and you gotta, you gotta play clean, you gotta play precise. You got to coach that way, and just as an organization, we didn't do well enough. Disappointed by the scoreboard, but thankful for the lessons learned. They are a team eager to continue growing.
Coach Chiano's lived up to everything that he said. Set some really high expectations for me of what Rutgers is and what Rutgers is going to be in the future. Show everybody what we are! Playing for him now is, you know, nothing like I expected. It's way harder than I thought it would be. It's been pretty much everything that I thought it would be. We're working hard. He say it's going to be hard, and it is. But it's all good work. Can you do that? Can you? Not me! Can you do that? I'm doing it! Let's Coach Chiano is very demanding and challenging. If I put in what I need to for him, he's gonna put in the same effort for me. He's all about tough love and he's gonna turn you into a better man. He's gonna help you become a better father. I was able to talk to him, you know, one-on-one -on -one outside of football and more about life and stuff like that. I think that's when our relationship really took off. He's a human being. Like, he understands how people feel. He understands what it takes and he's gonna push you to get there. But at the same time, he understands that we gotta be a family to do it. Yeah, coach! I think the thing I've learned from Coach Chiano is just the sheer honesty and transparency you can have in a team. Honesty. You put yourself in a position to tell the truth, then you're going to be all right in life. Press the blocker and get rid of him. You learn about the mind, uh, the game of football, outside of football. Time is everything. Basically, we all get the same time, and that's the only thing that's fair. Everything else is what we do with it. Leadership leads tells you be the example, be the guy in the front, be the person making it happen. You're either going to be a tremendous leader or a great follower. Either one, you're helping the team. Because you deserve it. You deserve my best. Like he likes to say, like, forget about all the bombs that's exploding around you and instead just chop on the moment. Gotta go back to just chopping. That's, that's the biggest thing he's preached since he got here. Chop! 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 And hey, you gotta go harder than that! Longer than that! We know he has our best interest at heart, and then that way it allows us to relax and kind of do our job knowing that you got that man behind you. Yes, sir! Uh, it felt really good to be back out there. I missed being with my guys, um, so I was really excited and um, felt pretty good today. So uh, it was, from that standpoint, um, pretty good. Guys played hard, but uh, we really didn't play a very clean game. Hats off to Penn State. I thought they played very well. We struggled to handle them up front, especially offensively. Certainly wasn't a lack of fight. They continued, the, the players fought throughout the game, but. Overall, we didn't coach well enough or play well enough to win. So Penn State deserved to win today. You know, they have a lot of talented players on their roster. You know, they're capable of doing a lot of things with their offense, but we just didn't play our best today, and that's what it comes down to. Um, we didn't stop them in situations we needed to, and we just need to get better collectively as a whole team, and that's what we're going to do. Football is a game of adversity, so stuff like that is always happening. Somebody goes down, it's somebody next up to come up and fill that spot. And you still had to play, you still had to stick to the game plan and play our football. Off balance, turns, throws it back of the end zone. The caught! Oh, no! Oh. Went way up high into the air and pulls it down for the score! Just got flushed to my left and was grateful that my guys were working with me in scramble drill. And I'm really grateful Bo can jump as high as he can. Uh, he's a talented, talented wide receiver and uh, uh, he went up and got one for us. Jump ball, it's caught! Bo Melton had pushed up position on the defense and caught the jump ball. Touchdown, Rutgers. I knew we were playing a good football team, so I knew we, we were going to be aggressive, for sure. Definitely, you know, it's, it's the Big Ten for a reason. You know, it's, it's the big dogs of college football, so... You know, we're improving every single week as the season goes on. This season isn't easy for anybody, so we're not going to make excuses. You know, the Big Ten requires your best every single week. Every team is very talented in all aspects, so if it's, nothing, if it's nothing but your best every game, then you're not gonna get the results that you're seeking. So we just gotta get better as a team and focus on the areas we really need to improve on. Even though it was a tough loss, we just gotta come back the next day, tomorrow, and just keep chopping, grinding, and worry about the next game, which is Maryland. So you're gonna look over this game to tomorrow, then you head on to the next game, Maryland, next week. See the team arrival. 
views from warm-ups, the team tunnel walk, and more. Every home game this season at SHI Stadium. Three, one, two, three. It's Rutgers football sights and sounds. One hour before kickoff each home week. Catch it live on RU Athletics Twitter or on the Rutgers football Facebook page. At Rutgers, drive is in our nature. It's in our roots. Because we're the doers, the self-starters, the forward thinkers. Now is when we thrive. Together is how we grow. This is Rutgers, where your success grows the world. Start of a day. No one in America. Nobody in America started the day like we did today. Focus the rest of the day, right? We got walkthrough right now. It's an energetic, excitable, it's an emotional, it's uh, spirited, where guys are pushing themselves, push each other. If you come in with the mindset that you're in there to get better, you're in there to develop, that's the that's the initial atmosphere I'm trying to create. Get big today, baby! It's time to get big! Big boy football! Milton is sacked on the blitz! Well, he's going to get an assessment. I mean, what are his his um, his strengths? What are his weaknesses? What are we going to improve on to make him a better football player? Ultimately, the best football player he can be, and then how to attack those areas? Whether it's you know some mobility issues, some strengths, some power. Oh my goodness! An incredible play! Strength is the force I can produce. I'm lifting a weight, benching, squatting, or even an isometric strength. How much force can I produce? Oh, a third and short. Trust him. Another big collision. Submarine. Unbelievable. Power is the rate at which I can produce force. So there's a time component. So it's that force divided by time, which is really a measure of your explosiveness. Running, hit, driving, in! Oh, oh my God! Game. We'll do Olympic-style lifts, plow matches, all those things that are going like, to train for that power component. And carry defenders all the way down. Speed to me is that initial acceleration. It's the acceleration that makes great football players. Brookshank is gonna go! 100 yards! Flexibility is basically taking a muscle through a range of motion as to not be compromised on, on, the, on the playing field. Being a stronger player overall is an injury reducer. The caught went way up high into the air and pulls it down for the score. It's not coming in just because we have to lift and they show up. They're really a hard-working bunch of kids. I think they're learning what our expectations are and uh, what it takes to play at this level. Unbelievable! How about the toughness, just the will? Good question about the walk-ons. Those of you who have followed our program know they're, they're a critical part of what we do. We had seven walk-ons that became captains of our football team when I first go around here. Uh, that's, that's a high number. We've had uh, several that have gone on to play in the NFL. When you talk about guys like Brandon Rankart, Gary Brackett, Michael Burton, who's actively playing right now for the, for the New Orleans Saints. That to me, you know, when you identify guys, and then you develop them. Jay Butler, tremendous, you know, our strength and conditioning program, tremendous element to the walk-on program. You see guys develop, the coaching staff, how they develop the players over the years. And a lot of it goes back to the very beginning. I personally watch every, every walk-on that we offer, right? Because when I do that, I know that they can come in here and help our program. One, two, three! I think it's a critical, critical element to our program, and it always will be. And now he's going to be hit and dropped at the line of scrimmage. They give it to McGahee, and he's tackled inside 
by Gary Brackett. Junior captain, former walk-on, who's having a great year with 57 tackles coming into today's game. I think for me personally, what led me to walk on at Rutgers was, at the time, the opportunity to compete at the at Division One level. I think I had a few opportunities to play at you know, D1 AA schools and some Ivy League programs, but I wanted to play football at at the highest level you could, right? And then D1 was that, and then Rutgers being right in my backyard. Brandon Riker with the hit. Being a New Jersey kid, being able to compete in state, and uh, just being an hour away from home, having the ability for my family to come and see me, my friends come see me. Kind of really bought into what Coach Channel was, his whole idea of what, what he wanted the football program to be and what he envisioned it being. Touchdown, Rutgers! You know, I wanted to be on a national stage. That was knocked down by Gary Brackett, number 41. And then just when you look at the academic that Rutgers offers you from a walk-on's perspective, uh, it was a no-brainer. It's top tier college and, and academics year in, year out. So I was very interested in the engineering program at Rutgers, and, and they're one of the, the, the top schools in that category. I can remember our first meeting, um, meeting Coach Ciano, and he's looking at the roster. He says, oh, Gary Brackett, oh, you just got a scholarship. I said, yes, sir. He said, uh, we'll see about that. Right, so, um, right, you've learned your football. You got to shine that up for sure. But now we got to take our effort level another level. Coach Ciano didn't sugarcoat it at all. When he awarded me the scholarship, he told me that the work didn't stop there. And even before that time, you know, I was preparing like a starter you know, sacrificing, doing things in the weight room, whatever I could do to make myself the best player I could be. You, you will have the opportunity to play. It's it's up to you when your number gets called to show that you're you're ready and you, you can play. These are guys that, you know, maybe underdeveloped and with the right coaching and the right work ethic would, would develop into something. The main thing on my mind was getting playing time. So I wanted to work my way into like the two deep, which I eventually made it to. That was a huge goal to accomplish. He held people to the same standards. If you could contribute, he's gonna find the best players and put them on the field, right? He's gonna give you the opportunity so long as you're prepared and put in the work. It was all about, you know, whoever performed throughout the week, most importantly, um, in the classroom, in the weight room, those are the kids who get an opportunity to go play. Stepping onto the field, it doesn't matter if you're on scholarship or not. You know, if you're in between those lines, in between a whistle, you're just playing football, all right? And if you're the best player out there, that's all that matters. Rob Smith, I'm the defense coordinator and I work with the safeties. Red! Go! You know, the reason I coach is, is I love watching young men accomplish their, their, their dreams and their goals. You know, the process of them working towards a common goal with another group of men and, and ultimately accomplishing that goal, that's, that's what really makes coaching special to me. I kind of grew up in a family where my mother was a first grade teacher for 30 some years, so teaching is very important to me. And by the same token, you know, I understand very clearly what uh, kind of the principles in which this program are, are built on, and, and, and we're going to demand those principles from our players every day. Here's what I want to see happen. Slide over, battle. Do it again and stop on the whistle. We always start our meetings with an attitude, and we also take the field with an attitude. So um, that's something he always incorporates in every meeting that we have. You have to be a little crazy to play on defense, you know, to be running at someone 100 miles an hour and hitting them. So Coach Smith doesn't take it lightly whenever we're not swarming, and that's something we're big on in this program too. So um, they require nothing but your best effort, and you know, you need people like that to push you to become a better football player. 
as well as a better team, too. So we're lucky to have them. It was stripped away. Intercepted. It's stripped to the football. It's loose. You know the game. Like, he's been coaching for, like, 20 years, coaching defense. He coached a lot of players, put a lot of people in the, in the league, and I just trust him. We, we've been fortunate, you know, to have some really great players play for us in this program. And, you know, I think the thing about it is they may not have always been the most talented players, but they were certainly developed and they were really, really smart and they loved to play the game of football. And, and that's why they've gone on and, and, and had success at the next level. He knows the game of football inside out and I've learned a lot of details and the little things I didn't really know about football, you know, just coming here and learning from him too. Brenton White, that'll do it. We spent a lot of time on situational football, knowing what a team's gonna do on first and second and third down. Quarterback keep, no running room at all. It's fun because it's a mix up. Sometimes we can have our eyes on the quarterback. Other times we locked in on our man. Sometimes we play man, sometimes we play zone. So that's just fun just, just to switch stuff up and you can disguise things and do different things, keep the offense guessing. That's the 10th force turnover this year by Rutgers. The great part of being a coordinator is you really get a chance to be attached to, to all the positions, right? And that's and learn what makes each group tick, the players, and, and what they know and what they can do, and whether it's a student, whether it's a, a person socially, whether it's an athlete, we're helping them be the best that they can be in, in, their, in, in their whole gamut of life, and that's really what this is, is all about. Okay, guys, get moved on to Maryland. We're locked in, we have a opportunity to go down to, to College Park and play a, a good Maryland team, and, and we're looking forward to it. And we're going on the road, and I'm getting informed daily there's going to be some hurdles in the travel and all that than you know, our normal procedure just because some different uh, policies in the state of Maryland. So we're going, to have to, we're going to have to adapt to that. Signing date in the middle of a game week is going to be different, but why wouldn't it be, right? It's 2020, everything's different. So, you know, recruiting never stops. So although I am focused on Maryland, part of my job and every coach on this staff's job is to continually recruit through the season. And, you know, recruiting is 365 days a year. So that's not unusual. What'll be unusual is that signing date is in the middle of a game week. That'll be a little weird, but you know, you roll with it and that's what we'll do. We, we really are excited about the class we're about to sign. It's pushed to the finish line, make sure that the guys that we want in this class are, are part of this class. Those that are mentally the most tough, those that are, have the ability to stay focused on the task at hand are gonna do the best down the stretch. So I think what we just need to do is lock in on, on what we're doing this week. That's what our culture is built on. CHOP is just that. Focus on that spot and you know, try to put the other stuff off to the side for now and we'll get to it later. For the breakdown purposes, my focus is completely on Maryland.